On a black background, words appear and read the George Washington Carver National Monument Art and Essay Contest 2021. New words appear. Essay Awards. A park ranger stands in an old-fashioned schoolhouse setting. Welcome to the George Washington Carver National Monument Art and Essay Contest. We would like to thank all of our participants who joined us this year for their creative essays. The judges had a tough time coming up with the rankings because they were all so creative. A different park ranger stands in the old-fashioned schoolhouse setting. Here's the theme for our 2021 Art and Essay Contest. There is beauty in well-tilled fields, in healthy and crappy people, beauty in living in harmony with others. Here are the essays for this year's contest. A green ribbon with the words that read, Honorable Mention. Here are the honorable mentions for the essays. Zachary from Ms. Turk's class at St. Mary's Elementary in Joplin. Tyler from Ms. Hurst's class at Truman Elementary in Webb City. Eva from Ms. Hurst's class at Truman Elementary in Webb City. Julia from Mr. Carnahan's class at Thomas Jefferson Independent Day School. Joseph from Mr. Carnahan's class at Thomas Jefferson Independent Day School. A white ribbon with the words that read third place. All right, our third place winner goes to Olivia from Ms. Hurt's class at Truman Elementary School in Webb City. And I'd like to take the moment and read her essay entitled George Washington Carver. Can you imagine losing your father, sisters, brother, and mother? Well, that's what George Washington Carver had to go through as a young child. In all that had happened to him, this is a quote from George Washington Carver. There's beauty in well-tilled fields, in healthy and happy people, beauty in living in harmony with others. I love this quote because I think it means that to be kind to others no matter what skin color you are. As a little boy, George Carver had some apprehensive moments that occurred in his life. Several things happened, including his dad dying when a tree fell on him, two sisters and a brother went missing, and they were never to be seen again, his sister, mother, and George were kidnapped and sent to Arkansas. The Carvers who owned George's family were against slavery, but they needed help to take care of their garden. The Carvers sent neighbors to go and look for them. The only person that, that they found and brought back was George. The Carvers took care of George. Growing up as a black boy, things were hard, especially when he wanted to start learning. For a little bit, he was taught by a tutor, then he walked eight miles to Neosho School. It turns out he wanted a better school to go to, so he decided to walk 75 miles to Fort Scott for college. He was going to go to Highland, but got turned away when he arrived because of his race. So he decided to go to Iowa State to study botany, which is a study of plants. He was an artist. But one of his teachers told him to study botany because it would get him further in life than being an artist. He'd always loved plants as his pets or children. George Washington Carver made over 300 products using peanuts. Here are just some inventions. Ink, milk, soap, shampoo, dye, glue, medicine, candy, and even Gleason. He had many jobs like a scientist, inventor, and a professor. For his lab, he made it out of trash. He had around 500 students in his class, and the students would, pl would play stump the professor. George Washington Carver was a great man. When he was little, he would go out to his secret garden and spend hours out there. He called his plants pets. When he ripped the roots off the plant, he would start to cry. Soon he became known as the plant doctor. He would fix and help take care of other plants that people don't know how to take care of. George was a great man and did many awesome things in his life, but sadly he died in 1943, the age of 79. I hope you will be kind and sweet, just like George Washington Carver. A red ribbon with the words, second place. Our second place goes to Casey from Ms. Hurst's class at Truman Elementary in Webb City with their essay entitled, George Washington Carver. You've probably heard of George Carver. 
He was also known as the Peanut Man. He was born into slavery in 1864 in Diamond, Missouri. He said, There is beauty in well-tilled fields, in healthy and happy people, beauty in living in harmony with others. I don't know what you think that means, but I think it means if you, look, if you see beauty in well-tended fields, then you should see beauty in living in peace with others. And I think that George Carter was a stronger man than he thought he was. George Carver's start was dreadful. After being born a slave, he was two weeks old when the Civil War closed. His dad, Moses, died shortly before his birth, and later he, his mom, two sisters, and his brother were kidnapped. When their owner sent for them, unfortunately, only George was brought back. He then lived with the Carvers, whom, in fact, were very nice to him. He had only one book as a kid, and it was called Webster's Elementary Spelling Book. One of Mr. Carver's first experiences with education was from a private tutor the Carver's hired. After he learned all he could from her, he had a thirst for knowledge again and walked eight miles to an African-American school in the Ocean, Missouri. While he was there, he lived with a nice family, including Mariah and Andy Watkins. Once he absorbed all he could there, he went to Kansas. There was another George Carver there, and people were mixing them up. So Mr. Carver added a W to his name, and everyone thought it must be Washington, and that is how he is still known today. Mr. Carver graduated from high school around 1884, and from there he tried to go to Highland College, but was turned away because of the color of his skin. Can you believe that? He went to Simpson College in Indianola, Iowa. He was planning to be a painter, but his art teacher wanted him to study botany, so he did. While he was there, he had no money and found himself running a laundry business to make a living. The news soon spread that he did laundry and needed the money, and, he, and then his business went viral. He graduated in 1891 and got a master in botany. Then he got a job as a professor at the Stevie Institute. When he got there, he realized he had nothing to work with. He ended up working at, with trash to make vials and glasses. In the end, it turned, uh, it turned out okay. Mr. Carver died of old age on January 5, 1943, at the age of 73. To sum up the life of an extraordinary person, Mr. Carver was born into slavery and grew up to be one of the strongest and well-known persons to go through such a hard life. Even though Mr. Carver died in 1943, he changed the world forever. A blue ribbon with the words, first place. And first place goes to Haley from Ms. Hoffman's class at Mighty Oaks Christian School with her, with her essay titled, Carver Heals the Fields. When George Washington Carver went to Alabama by train, he noticed the mules were skinny and the cows weren't healthy. They didn't have enough food. The land was not healthy. He saw that the land was cracked. The people weren't healthy either. George's heart sank. He was sad to see the land, animals, and people were not in good shape. George knew there is beauty in well-tilled fields and healthy and happy people, beauty in living, beauty to living in harmony with others. What he saw was not beautiful. George knew why the farmers were not able to grow good crops. They weren't taking care of their land. He knew that the soil, animals, and people were, were all related. George said whenever the soil was rich, the people flourished physically and economically. They will have food and be healthy. The people will have crops and food to sell. The farmers' bad practice of plowing made the topsoil wash away. George showed them how to plow the land. He saw, the, he saw they only used one horse to plow. He asked for a plow with two horses. They made fun of him for using the two-horse plow, but he showed them they weren't plowing deep enough. Better plowing helped keep minerals and helped water to go down into the soil. This helped them grow healthier crops. Farmers were putting cotton in the same place every year. George thought farmers should make their soil healthier by moving their crops around. Rotating crops would help return minerals to the soil. 
He taught farmers to plant vegetables that would be easy on the soil. George helped farmers figure out how to plant and grow good vegetables. They learned how important it was to have a vegetable garden. Plant planting vegetables was important because then the farmers would have food to eat and sell. They could also give extra food to people who were poor. Having enough to eat makes a healthy, happy person. A healthy, happy person would be able to help themselves and others. An unhealthy person wouldn't even be able to help themselves. It's, it's hard to have harmony when people are hungry. It leads to trouble and fighting. People who are fighting won't get anything done. They'll only make it worse. They won't be able to fix their problems. George came in and helped the farmers solve their crops and food issues. He wanted to make their food, foods beautiful, or their fields beautiful again. Congratulations to all of the winners out there. Give yourselves a round of applause, but also thank you for everybody who participated. You all did a fantastic job. You should all be very proud of yourselves. We'd also like to thank the judges who took the time out of their busy schedule to evaluate these. But a special thank you goes out to our teachers. Ms. Lupini from George Washington Carver Elementary School in Neosho. Ms. Staten and Ms. Turk from St. Mary's Elementary in Joplin. Ms. Hoffman from Mighty Oaks Christian School. Ms. Hurst from Truman Elementary in Webb City. Mr. Wood from Wood Home School. Mr. Carnahan from Thomas Jefferson Independent Day School. Ms. Horton from Soaring Heights Elementary. And Ms. Jones from Truman Elementary in Nevada. We look forward to hearing from you and seeing your submissions next year.